Welcome everybody to By the Numbers, episode one, Blumhouse. Now, By the Numbers is going to be a podcast slash video series on YouTube where I'm going to be breaking down the, you know, whether it be studios, movies, and more over history of By the Numbers, how they were successful, how they weren't successful. And given that it's January and it's the beginning of the year, we always get that beginning of the year horror movie. Night Swim was one of them. And uh, there's a studio behind that I think has set the precedent that has allowed the horror genre to become one of the most stable and most profitable in terms of, you know, invest low investment and high reward for the entire movie industry. And that would be Blumhouse Studios. You might not recognize Blumhouse totally because they're not Warner Brothers. They're not Universal. They're not Disney. They're a company that produces a lot of different horror movies through these companies. And when you start seeing some of the products and the movies they've made in these lists that I'll go through, I think you'll recognize their work. And they have a pretty clear method on what they've done. It started a little bit in 20, you know, 2009. We'll go over their beginning you know, era, kind of when they made some of their franchises and how those franchises grew in the beginning. We'll move then to a blockbuster type era where they had some big hits in theaters that um, brought them a lot of money back. And then we'll look at more of their recent year successes and maybe even some other maybe recent year cut type failures where we'll break down the numbers and see how they've done since, you know, post pandemic. But when you think Blumhouse, there's one thing you need to know. They print money and how do they print money in Hollywood? It's pretty simple. In 2009, they moved into the horror genre. A genre that allowed them to produce movies on a very low budget. And you'll see throughout here what I mean by that. Going from 2009 all the way up to even what I would consider low budgets for 2023, 2024. And they maximize their profits because of the budget. So just a disclaimer here, I am not, you know, Blumhouse. I don't have access to their full data. Everything I got this here in terms of numbers or things I've compiled on all the list of movies they've released that I could find the budgets that I could find, and the worldwide grosses I can find. When it comes to any type of profits that I make here, I took their worldwide gross, divided that by two, roughly 50%, and minus that by the their budget of the movie. Now, I know this isn't going to be a, a tit-for-tat exactly the profits that Blumhouse made, but this gives us a very basic idea of how much money that these these movies are able to bring in on such low budgets and why Blumhouse Studios was able to succeed in the horror genre and how they kind of set horror up to be the standard bearer all the way through 2024 with other, I think, studios copying them all the way through. Now, Blumhouse kind of got their beginnings in 2009. I think a lot of people knew this classic when it came out, but you'll have things like Paranormal Activity, other franchises they came out with are going to be Insidious and The Purge, all of these movies have had sequels come out for years and years, including you'll see Insidious later on in, in more, you know, last year that have stood the test of time that, you know, were kind of original at their time, were based off existing property, and were able to print early on money to help build Blumhouse into what I thought became a horror movie genre um, juggernaut. When you think about movies make for a low budget, the paranormal era, which I consider 2009 to 2013, is the era where it was the most, I would say, seen and what people will remember. The first movie that they really did this with is going to be Paranormal Activity 2009. Now, this was more of like a student, I believe a student or an amateur made film that Paramount and Blumhouse picked up. And they, after they pit bought it and picked it up, they invested about $200,000 in their budget. Can you think about that? $200,000 in a movie nowadays? I don't even know if that'll get you a lead actor. But Paranormal Activity in 2009 basically had their whole budget for that amount. How successful was it, would you say? Even in 2009 standards, it made $194 million worldwide with the gross. And when I put that into my divided by two minus by the, you know, minus the budget formula, I estimate, again, rough estimate around $96.8 million of, of profit for paranormal activity. Here's a movie that they, that Blumhouse picked up, put about $200,000 of an investment in and got out 
probably somewhere above $90 million of, of actual profit out of it. That goes back to Paramount. That goes back to Blumhouse. That is a huge return on an investment. Just to give you an idea, that is almost a 500% return on investment. Not even 500%. That's honestly closer to about 5,000% return on investment. Huge, huge success overall. And then what came after Paranormal Activity? Well, they started making some of their own genre movies. Paranormal Activity 2 came out, and then Insidious came out in 2011. This was, again, a somewhat original idea. This was really the first Blumhouse movie that I think they built from their ground up. I believe they worked with the Paramount team again. They worked with the team that did Paranormal Activity, a different type of movie. This movie had a more Hollywood modest budget for that time. $1.5 million. Again, probably still a lot less than what an average blockbuster type movie would go, but $1.5 million of a budget looks really good for a movie that could bring in $100 million of worldwide gross. I know when you think about movies nowadays, if you think about a movie making $100 million, you're like, yeah, that's a flop, that's whatever. And that's because a lot of movies have these $200, $100, $50, 60 $70 million grosses, but when you have a $1.5 million budget, the gross ends up being $48.6 million in profit. Again, estimated, but, st but still, that's over 40 times the amount of profit that you put in, in the budget. That is the type of profit that allows you to pay all the creatives a another nice amount to reinvest into the studio to make maybe a little bit bigger and more grandiose movies to stabilize the, you know, the whole system per se so you're not running off the bare minimum but you're not really needing to put more in you can see the formula being created and being nearly perfected and as, as early as 2011 what also came out in 2011 paranormal activity 3 again paranormal activity 2 did decently well at the box office but paranormal activity 3 was a breakout in my opinion it went from that 200k type budget even more than Insidious, it, they, they, when you get that big money in terms of profit, you can raise the investments. It brought in a $5 million budget. Again, when you think about something that's going to be five times as much, you're like, holy smokes, it's a big investment. But compared to what movie studios generally put in, this is very little investment at all. Especially, again, $207 million gross. It made even more than the original Paranormal Activity. It made over double the gross of Insidious. And again, because the budget is so, so low, this allowed it to make almost $100 million of profit. It made, again, my estimates is about 98.5, but that 90-ish million dollars of profit for a movie that you made for $5 million is a huge, huge return on investment. Again, 18 times the return on investment. You see it with The Purge now, another new franchise they came out with. We all, we've seen... A variety of Purge TV shows and movies spawn on after this. It had a $3 million budget. Again, as you see, time kind of moves on. This was 2013. You know, the studio is getting more money in. They're putting a little bit more money into their movies. And it might not have made as much as Insidious or any of the paranormal movies. It brought in $89.3 million for a worldwide gross. But that still left it with around 40 ish million dollars of profit, which, again, 10 times the budget of the movie that is a huge success that's again that is the studio printing itself money if you told somebody hey i'm going to give you three million dollars for investments and they're able to bring you back 40 million dollars you're going to love that person and it's why blumhouse continues to be the standard and it's why as time has gone on we're seeing more and more horror movies pop up every single month and you might be like, well, they're not the biggest box office movies. It's because this formula, which started in 2009 and went through 2013, had this major success that you could put out these small budgeted movies and print out a decent amount of profit. Finally, in this era, I wrapped it up with the second Insidious movie to kind of show you what you know a part two might do to a successful movie in terms of budget, in terms of gross and stuff like that. Well, Insidious Part Ch Chapter 2 went from a $1.5 million budget to a $5 million budget. You see parallels between Paranormal Activity and Paranormal Activity 3. This movie was able to bring in $161 million of gross, you know, of, of, you know, worldwide gross sales. Just, you know, 
seeing o over $61.9 million increase from the first Insidious. So for an extra $3.5 million, you churned out over $60 million of worldwide gross. And that brought a profit of about $75 million in for Insidious Part 2, which almost almost double, but you're adding another $30 million, 30 plus million dollars of, you know, of profit from the first movie to the second movie. And you're seeing the franchise build through and you're seeing fans being made and the studio building itself out. And as it's built itself out, it did continue to this role. We saw Insidious Chapter 3, Paranormal Activity 4, you know, things like Purge, you know, Happily, Happily Ever After, movies like that. But the next era I want to highlight on is what I consider the blockbuster era. This is where I think Blumhouse stepped up the game in a way to where you most people saw these movies and, and either enjoy these movies or recognize and were excited to see them. Movies that made an impact, I think, culturally beyond just the horror genre. They were kind of led by three different things. First up, you have M. Night Shyamalan. He was made two movies with Blumhouse that we'll go over that Again, I would consider it a, a blockbuster on Blumhouse's standards, both with the amount of money they brought in, the amount of profit they brought in, and their budgets. The second director that, again, was kind of new at the time, we saw him in some comedy skits, but he's become quite a formidable director of his own, Jordan Peele. And finally, this is where Blumhouse started to acquire old properties and try to make use of old horror genre movies, you know, use their copy and paste formula of low budgets um high profits in horror with the halloween franchise these three kind of started out what i would consider the blockbuster era of Blumhouse. and we're going to start out with these two directors these i, I consider the big directors we we'll start off with m night Shyamalan. his big block hit with what you know his first hit with Blumhouse was split Came out in 2016. Kind of was M. Night Shyamalan's kind of revival after the horrible Avatar movie and some of his other projects. This movie, like Blumhouse normally does, was not made with a big budget. $9 million was kind of on their upper end of budgets. That was a project they had a lot of faith in or believed in. It was able to do a worldwide gross, though, of $278 million. So this was... A almost a $300 million movie worldwide, which means it probably brought in with that $10 million budget, over $100 million of profit. It brought in close to about $130 million of profit. Now, I'm sure some of that was split between, no pun intended, M. Night Shyamalan, Blumhouse, their, you know, the studio that helped um, get, this, get this to the screen. But it kind of revolutionized the whole M. Night Shyamalan and what Blumhouse was ready to do because in 2019 they followed it up with a sequel called Glass which I think everybody was excited for it definitely was seen as a blockbuster type movie in the world in 2019 right before the pandemic might not have be a billion dollar type movie but it was a movie that I think a lot of people were aware of it again because of the success of Split it came in with a 20 million dollar profit it, they saw that, you know, $20 million profit, a $20 million budget. They saw that $9 million budget bring back over $100 million of profit with M. Night Shyamalan. They, they reinvested into him. They brought in the, maybe more actors to it. They brought in a little bit higher production budget. It wasn't well received as Split, but it still did almost $250 million worldwide. It ended up about $247 million, which you might think, oh my goodness, it made less money. That must be like a big bust. But because of the budget still being low, again, Hollywood standards, $20 million in 2019 is a very cheap, cheap, cheap budget. This is a year where we're seeing a lot of movies come out that are $100 to $200 million budgets that are blockbusters. Well, this movie still made over probably over $100 million in gross profit, roughly around that amount. So, yes, they invested more. They might not have gotten as much profit out of it, but... If you're telling somebody you can, again, five times the amount of profit is going to come back that you invested, that is a huge win. And it, it shows you how successful Blumhouse has become, even in this blockbuster type era, where they're getting movies in the 200 plus million dollar worldwide gross range, which is pretty big for horror movies. They don't usually go that high. Now, Jordan Peele, 
he shot out of a fire cannon as a director with Get Out. Pretty sure he won an award for a screenplay with this movie for the Oscars. Either way, this made Jordan Peele become a household name for a lot of people. It's a wonderful, great movie. Again, being kind of an unknown director compared to M. Night Shyamalan, he had about a $4.5 million budget from what I can find. And this movie became a cultural phenomenon. It came out, I believe, during February in 2017. And it pulled over $250 million worldwide at the box office. $255.7 million, to be exact, that I could find rounded up. And when you have that small budget, when you have this big hit, you get $120-plus million in gross profit for this movie. Again, it put Jordan Peele on the map. He was able to win an Oscar for it, I'm pretty sure. He at least got nominated for an Oscar. It was a huge hit for Blumhouse out of nowhere. It was a big blockbuster. Everybody remembers Get Out in the Moments and Get Out. And he followed it up in 2019 with another movie, Us. And much like Glass, this one saw a $20 million budget. It had a very similar type of box office run as, as Get Out. It's not a sequel to Get Out. It's its own kind of unique movie. It's its own original movie. And that had about $256 million worldwide at gross. So nearly identical to Get Out. Again, you reward the the, the studio, you know, the director and everybody around the studio for the huge hit. This one might not have gone more with it, but it still brought in enough money that it was a, over $100 million likely of profit. Again, I say this again, over five times the amount it was invested came back as profit. That is huge wins in the world of Hollywood's that's the type of stuff that will fund studios for the next three or four years in terms of projects. And here alone, you have four of them in a four-year period that could probably fund the next 10 years of Blumhouse and probably likely did, if not more. The other franchise we talked about around this era, the blockbuster era, as I call it, was Halloween. You had kind of the Halloween sequel slash reboot in 2018. You had Halloween Kills, and then last year you had Halloween Ends. Some of these movies weren't well-received as others, but overall, budget-wise, for the three films they put together, roughly $63 million in budget, so $21 million each. Again, Halloween being a more known name going in, Blumhouse likely invested more money on the top. It brought in almost $500 million of worldwide gross, so for that, you're looking a little bit over not quite $200 million for all of them, Roughly about 160 for all, you know, 160 to 170 gross for each movie. And again, some of them were really bad. Halloween Ends was not a good movie. And Halloween Kills also debuted on Peacock during the pandemic. It might not have had the biggest as box office run as it could have if it was just theaters only. But still, for all three movies, the profit was 185 ish million dollars again with my calculations so that's still 60 ish million dollars of profit per movie that's still three times your amount that you're investing most likely coming back in terms of the profit and those are things again that you know 120 million dollars with the blumhouse budgeting system for more of their original content that could be six to seven to eight movies that come out and some of that, all this stuff really propelled them past the pandemic into their new era, where I think we're seeing a lot more of the Blumhouse success come back and be there, whether the movie's great or not. And that brings me to my recent years, which is from 2022, kind of post-pandemic until now. The first one that comes to mind is in 2022, you had The Black Phone. I want to say that came out in around July in 2022. It had a $10 million budget. So again, when you, when those other movies that are making almost $100 million of profit, well, 10% of that profit can go into the budget for this next movie. That is able to deliver $161 million of worldwide gross, which again, coming out of the pandemic with a brand new property and the way that you know box office is acting now is not a bad return on investment. And when you look at the gross profit, it's still made but likely about six to seven times its budget back and just gross profit for the studio. Again, there's another six black phones that can be budgeted or two or three if you raise the budget a little bit higher. Coming out in 2023 last year around this time was Mathrigan or Megan, whatever you want to call it. This movie, again, as, as times has gone on, the budgets that used to be four or five million dollars are now 10 or 12 million dollars. But this was a huge kind of 
cultural hit. And for the time, again, we're not seeing that many billion dollar movies post pandemic. And it was competing with the likes of Avatar and some other movies. It was able to bring in a nice $180 million of, of worldwide gross, which for a movie with a $12 million budget allows it again to be about six to seven times a profitable level, you know, at $78 million of profit in my calculation. Now let's go further into 2023. What else came out last year? Insidious the Red Door. See that original franchise they made back in 2011? Well, it's still pumping out content for them as they brought a lot of the actors back, which did raise its budget to be about $16 million, which, again, for Blumhouse, is like, oh my goodness, we're getting almost a blockbuster level. We're blowing out, you know, we're blowing out the budget. But it made almost $200 million in theaters, and I, I did not like this movie. This is one of my worst-ranked movies of the year. But it's also one of the best financial success stories of last year because it likely made itself, again, five to six times its its budget and profit. That is the Blumhouse way. We're seeing them come back to it. We're seeing them consistently have two, three, four, five movies a year being able to push this through. What came out in the fall last year that was a hit from Blumhouse? Five Nights at Freddy's. Based off the popular video game horror genre movie, you know, genre, the movie came out in October. Even debuted day and day on Peacock. Did that stop it? No, it had a twenty million dollar budget, likely more because it's a known property, kind of like Halloween, kind of like the second go around of Glass and Us with Ed Knight, Shyamalan, Jordan Peele. It had its own branding behind it. It brought in almost three hundred million dollars. I think it's this, this is Blumhouse's highest individual grossing movie worldwide ever. It made almost three hundred million dollars. It just was short at two hundred and eighty nine million dollars. And that meant it brought almost over $100 million again in profit. This is part of their blockbuster genre. We're going to see Five Nights at Freddy's 2 come. We're going to see likely a Five Nights at Freddy's 3. People might, whether they like the movie or not, the budget was small enough that whenever it had almost $300 million, it pushed through about six times the profit level of its budget. And it's just a, a classic example of Blumhouse winning. Now, to end this out here, when we look at recent movies, there's a movie that came out earlier this month. It doesn't have great word of mouth. It doesn't have great reviews. Night Swim. Right now, it's my worst movie of the year. I haven't seen that many movies, so take that for what it is. But it was budgeted around $15 million. Again, post-pandemic posting, we're seeing budgets rise higher and higher for these movies. And... Right now, from whenever I made these stats, which I believe would be Tuesday the 16th, it had about a $30.6 million worldwide. And you might look at that and be like, oh my goodness, that is horrible. That's terrible. This is a bomb. And for some studios, it might feel like a bomb. But again, taking my method of dividing by two and just subtracting the budget, which again, it's just a rough estimate. I'm not saying this is the exact number, but... By my metric, it is barely breaking into the profit sphere. It's at, after two weeks, it's about $294,000 of profit. And when you think about movies and stuff, that's not including what will eventually be its digital run, what will eventually be its licensing run for streaming and other services. So Night Swim very likely will probably pull out a million or $2 million of gross profit. It won't make its budget back, but it's not going to lose the company money. And when you're sitting back there, you can just kind of be like, okay, we made our money back. Let's go reinvest that into another property, like a Megan 2, like a Black Phone 2, like another brand new original movie, you know, like you saw. Maybe that one will make us over $100 million at worldwide gross. Maybe that one will make us, you know, 60, 70, 80 million dollars of profit. Blumhouse has a system here that is working very, very well. And they're one of the most unknown secrets to a lot of people who aren't fans of horror. And that's why I wanted to feature them in my first episode of By the Numbers. Now, when we look at my Blumhouse Studio totals from 20, 2009 to 2024, that paranormal activity era till now, these are the stats I came up with. They've done about $560 million in budgeted movies, which I think was 71 movies I can find. That comes out to about $8 million, $7.9 million budget average per movie, 
which is very cheap in today's world of movie making. It's very easy to see even the most basic movie have a 20 to 30 to 40, 50 million dollar budget. Over the last 15 years, they've averaged around 8 million. They've had over $6 billion of worldwide gross, which for each movie is roughly around $86.6 million of gross. Again, it might not look huge, it might not look big, that 86.6 average, but that is so many movies that they're putting out there that they're making some money back on, that they're breaking even on, that they're probably making a lot more money when it comes to streaming and licensing out their products that's continuing a product's legacy throughout the whole entire way. And $6.152 billion in gross. Let's put this in perspective. The $560 million in budget, that's a little bit above what Avatar 2 was budgeted at last year. I think that one was around $400 million. That movie was super successful, made a lot of money, and it, its gross total was just over $2 billion worldwide. Well, for about $100 million more in budgets... This studio in 15 years has produced almost three times the amount of worldwide gross dollars. Now, it might not be an all-in-one hit like an Avatar, but that adds up over time. And that is a huge, I think, box office success that would, should not be ignored and should be really remembered and learned upon whenever it comes to not just horror genre movies, but any genre movies or just movies in general. Blumhouse has a system. Blumhouse knows how to work it. Blumhouse knows how to print money, and it shows whenever you look at their profits. They've probably done about $2.5 billion of profits in these 15 years, which is insane to think for a movie studio that doesn't even have a budget, you know, in the billions. It, it Which means each project they put out generally has an average profit of about $35 million. Which again lines up to about four to five million, you know, four to five times what their budget is. And to me, that is the sign of a successful movie studio when they can put a budget out for a movie and they're making around three to four times the amount of profit that they can make. Even if they make about two times the profit back of the budget they put out there, that's a huge win. But the fact that Blumhouse is doing it four to five times is completely insane and is why they are my first ever by the numbers episode. Now, if you like this type of content, tell me down below what you want me to see what you want me to see tackle next. I'll probably have the next one of these out in February. Tell me your thoughts if I got things right, if I got things wrong, did I misrepresent things? Tell me, did you realize if Blumhouse was a thing? Um leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more stuff like this. I really like that when I go into the numbers of Hollywood and and what is really constitutes as the success and unsuccess monetarily and i can't wait to do it by the numbers episode two later this month and i can't wait to see you all then until then i wish you all a happy day and enjoy life